Hi, I'm the developer of Image to ZX Spec. Today I'm going to run through the features of this software and show you the best ways of using it to produce retro artwork. You can either download Image to ZX Spec from the website silentdevelopment.co.uk or run it online. Ok, so let's get started. I'm going to run Image to ZX Spec online. This warning is purely because it's an online application that will access your local files on your computer. In this case it's fine to just run it. Ok, I've prepared some images for this from the film Little Shop of Horrors. This will produce, uh, used to produce, our slideshow. Notice how I've ordered these. This is the order that they'll appear in the slideshow. Here they are again, in the correct order. OK, once we've chosen the input files, we need to choose where we're going to save the output slideshow and the output files, uh, the converted files that we're going to see. OK, once we've done that, we can convert it straight away or we can choose some options. For now I'm just going to convert it with the default option. Process. I'm not happy with the result, it's too dark. So let's adjust the options. The pre-process options affect the source images the ZX screen format is 256 by 192 pixels, so this is the default. If you want retro poster art, leave this as none and it will apply the effect to the full size image. Ok, let's go through the other three options. Contrast, saturation and brightness are all self-explanatory, however I'll explain how they affect the end result, the image on the right. ZX Spectrum colours are more like primary colours, they're very bright and garish. By increasing the contrast you will make the colours on the left hand side picture, when it converts, uh, more primary and so you'll have more colour on the right hand side in the output. The saturation, this tends to make the image more grey, the left hand side image more grey. The end result is that if you have too much colour on your ZX Spectrum image, uh, too many different colours, reducing this to the left will actually improve that output. And finally the brightness change. If you find there's not enough white in your image, there's far too much in the way of other colours, increasing this to the right will produce more white in the image. OK, so the image is too dark, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the brightness. Now I'll try doing it again. As you can see, the result this time is actually too bright. In fact, if you see the left and compared to the right, you can see it's actually too grey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the saturation. Let's give that another try. That seems to be much better. It's still not quite right, so I'll just make a final adjustment. Let's speed that up a little bit. OK, now let's go through the other options. There are two types of dithering options or dithering modes. There is 
error diffusion and order dithering they're put in the same menu here because basically they are the same thing uh, we have a number of well-known error diffusion algorithms in here basically everything stucky and above error diffusion and ordered or magic square are also of that family of dithering algorithms now what these do is they basically generate the dotted pattern you see in the image. They make up for the lack of colour by putting an intermediate pattern between the two colours that makes it look like there is another colour there. So as you can see, you can see the fade from the light blue to a blue to a darker to a sort of dark blue. Generally, the ordered and the magic square algorithms are the best. You can experiment with these, see what you're happy with. For the moment, we'll stick with the magic square NASIC. OK, so let's have a look at some of the other options. As you might have seen, this is a bit blocky. This is because on the ZX Spectrum, colour is applied in an 8x8 pixel block, even though the detail is obviously on a per pixel basis. To get around this problem, you can actually switch the colour off and choose the monochrome mode conversion. And you get to choose the ink and the paper colour here. This gives it a sort of newspaper effect. And you can control the amount or the degree of black and white in the image by adjusting this slider here. So let's just run that through just so you can see what it's like. As you can see, there is a lot more detail in the image. We'll just convert that back again. Finally, the intensity is the degree to which the dithering algorithm, the, notice the ordered or magic dithers only, is actually applied to the image. So this pattern that you see here can actually be toned down in a way, or it will be uh, less patterny. So what we'll do is we'll just reduce that slightly because I'm not exactly happy with that I think it looks too bright now but I don't want to adjust the brightness on the other page what this will do is it will introduce darker colors back into the image more primary colors rather than this pattern so let's give that a try as you can see there's much more black in the image now which is what I was striving for okay that seems to be much better so that's the final result I'm not exactly happy with this because it has lost some detail. However, you can change the dithering mode and that might improve things. Instead of working on a 4x4 pixel block, you can choose another dithering algorithm, for example the ordered 16x16, which will work on a larger block and might actually provide more detail. So I'll give that a quick try. OK, so the final screen, the export options. Here you can choose the output format, it's either PNG or JPEG, of the actual images such as for poster prints and so on that you might do. You've also got an SCR export, that is for actual usage on a ZX Spectrum if you're a programmer, a tape slideshow export which you can run actually on a Spectrum using one of the many programs on the internet to convert it, or actually run it in a ZX Spectrum emulator which I'll show you in a minute. And an image export, this is by default switched on. Uh, and so what this means is currently we have a number of images in our output directory as you can see there. What we're going to do now is we're just going to create the tape slideshow export so we can run it in an emulator. Okay so there we go. This is the tap file or the tape file that we're going to use in the emulator. Okay so I'll just drag and drop this. This has been accelerated. Uh, this is running, I think it's about 100 times faster than an actual ZX Spectrum. 